Stockwell International, we receive many phone calls each week from people importing for the first time. Customers are after further information on how to successfully navigate the complex process of importing from around the world. If you're new to importing, we can help you on your way. We've simplified the importing process into five key steps that every importer should follow to ensure a successful import. There are often other factors you may need to consider as well, depending on the nature of your trade, and our team are more than happy to help you with those additional areas. But these five key steps are a great place for you to start. Step one, carefully research your product suitability for import. The first thing you must do before even thinking about importing is check whether your product is suitable for import. Find out, are your goods legally allowed into Australia? Will they need fumigation or need to be treated? Are they packed with wooden, bark or dunnage materials? If you have any questions about whether your commodity will be allowed into Australia, seek advice from the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestries or check their website www.daff.gov.au Are you thinking about importing a commodity to be used or consumed by the general public? There are specific Australian standards that you must follow to guarantee the safety of the general public. Please visit www.standards.org.au or www.foodstandards.com.au to find out requirements for your specific product. We can't recommend strongly enough that you do your research before you go ahead with your shipping. This can save yourself a great deal of frustration and wasted time, money and effort if your goods aren't allowed into the country. Step 2. Know your supplier. Be sure you have a reputable supplier with whom you can work. Preferably, there's someone you've met personally or who has been referred to you by someone you trust. Develop firm lines of communication with your intended supplier prior to doing any trade. Form a solid association with them so you're fully aware and comfortable with their business methods and have a clear understanding of your role in the relationship. A good strategy is to only pay your supplier in part until your goods arrive safely. Negotiate a percentage of the total cost prior to shipment and the remaining balance once the goods arrive into Australia. Never pay for goods in full prior to shipment. Step 3. Determine how you will transport your cargo. Know your INCO terms. These are also called terms of trade. Your INCO terms will determine how your goods will be moved. They depend on where your supplier's responsibility for the cargo ends and where yours begins. The most common terms of trade are FOB, which stands for free on board. This means your supplier deals with all the costs and responsibilities up until the origin port then you are responsible for them once the goods are on board the ship to the final destination. XWorks refers to door-to-door -to -door transport. This means transport of goods from the premises of manufacture overseas to your premises in Australia. CNF stands for cost and freight. This is where your supplier is responsible for arranging the shipment up to the destination port here in Australia. As the consignee, you are responsible for the port and handling fees, customs clearance and delivery to your door. The goods can then be shipped by air freight or sea freight. For a full list of INCO terms, visit our website at www.stockwells.com.au and click on Useful Tools. Step 4. Gather and complete all the necessary documents for importing. Familiarise yourself with the correct standard paperwork required. These are an original bill of lading or express bill of lading, commercial invoice, packing list, and quarantine packing declaration. The paperwork is the importer's responsibility. These documents must be in place and given to your customs broker before the shipment arrives in Australia for customs clearance. There may be other documents you need to provide customs that you will need to get from your supplier. These will depend on the commodity you are importing. Please visit www.daff.gov.au to check your requirements. Step 5. Determine how your goods will be transported once arriving in Australia. Once the goods arrive into the Australian port, you will need to arrange for these to be transported to the destination. For FCL shipments, you will have a window of 7 to 10 days once the vessel arrives for these to be delivered to the destination address, unpacked and returned empty to the container yard. Be aware, if your container is not returned within the allocated time frame, this is called detention and you will be charged a fee per day per container. Unloading the container either manually or by forklift is also the responsibility of the importer. 
Estimated delivery time of when the vessel arrives to when the container is available for delivery is approximately as follows. One to three days for FCL, five to seven days for LCL, and one to two days for air freight. So let's go over these five steps again. Step one, research your product suitability for import. Step two, know your supplier. Step three, determine how you will transport your cargo. Step four, gather and complete all necessary documents for importing. And step five, determine how your goods will be transported once arriving in Australia. If you follow these five critical steps, you'll find your path to importing far easier and straightforward with less chance of wasted money and effort. Finally, please remember that although we have discussed importing in depth, most of these steps also apply for people wanting to export. Please feel free to contact us here at Stockwell International if you have any questions regarding importing or exporting, or please visit our website at www.stockwells.com.au. In the meantime, we wish you all the best with your new importing or exporting venture.